So I started these about two years ago and today um, I finished off this section and this section and now I'm going to do the edging and before the night falls I should have all of the gold around this one and then I'm going to start on filling in this one. This one's a little out of my arm range and I'm not entirely certain on how I'm going to get to that one. I may end up having to do these around the edge and then they take these two off the frame and do them differently because I apparently did not calculate when I did this my arm reach which you know it's all a lesson. Okay so I'm about to start on these little squiggles and something that I do to keep my threads from, see how it's frayed a little bit on the end there? And I want to keep as much of my thread as possible in good condition. I will run my threads through a thread conditioner. I will load four needles at a time to make this a little bit faster. If you want to, you can thread condition it with it on the needle. I normally do it when it's off the needle, but I wanted to show you how to do it if it was on. I've got my four needles. Okay. Now you see where I've got my throwaway threads here? So I do a cross in the back and then go back down. Now if you look at this one, all of my threads are going into the sun on all of these directions to start with. Kind of depends on where you choose to start, but you want to keep a straight line if at all possible. And this is kind of the beginning, I guess, of a satin stitch but what you're gonna end up doing is a Bayou Tapestry stitch. So we want to fill in You know, I'm, see how I'm going from one side to the other? Because sometimes when you do this satin stitch base and you go side by side, it puckers the fabric a little bit. And it could be the type of thread I'm using too. So when I use purl, If you go side by side to get it tight enough, sometimes that stitch isn't actually tight enough side by side. So if you pop over here, then it lays nice and flat. It doesn't work for everything, but it works really well on these curved, smaller shapes. And most of my thread is on the top. I'm not wasting a lot of it. And if you think about it historically, they're not gonna wanna waste too much thread on the background or on the back side of the fabric because it's expensive. Think about all of the hand work used to create the threads you're even embroidering with. It's quite labor intensive. It's also 
going to raise the value of your garment historically, the amount of decorations you have on it because you can afford the threads that you are using to decorate your garment. People weren't dumb. They didn't do things for no reason. That pretty much stops there. Now, if you want to draw the lines on your fabric, you can totally do that to give yourself a guide. Okay, you saw how my thread's kind of like not very much there. I'm gonna actually hide my thread back here. And then I'm going to pull it out there, and I'm going to snip it here. Now, that used that piece of thread, and I'm going to come in here with another piece. Again, I'm going to do kind of a cross in the back, and then go back down. like if you look here they're kind of going in because I'm creating a um, kind of like a what's the word I'm looking for the illusion of movement in my stitches stitches to create all kinds of illusions and this is kind of the illusion that I'm going for with this is an illusion of movement now I'm not worried about making sure I stay inside all the black lines because I know each one of these bigger areas is going to be this fill in this other color fill in. I think it's 902. This is 742 in pearl cotton.
Okay. And now I can get to these two. Perfect. 